Thank you, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Good evening. It's so wonderful. Uh, such wonderful people here. Uh, and thanks for coming at such a short notice. Uh, actually, this was not the intent of the original press conference. Uh, since the film released, uh, almost two or three weeks after the film, when it really became a historical success, a lot of foreign correspondents wanted to talk to me. And so they contacted uh, Global Kashmiri Pandit Diaspora and they wanted to hold a press conference at uh, Foreign Correspondents Club. Since I was traveling, I was committed and there was no time before the 3rd of May. The president of Foreign Correspondents Club called me and he was insisting that we do it as soon as possible. They wanted to do it last month, but I was not free. So therefore, 5th of May was decided. And only after a lot of discussions, we confirmed it and a very senior Z executive flew down specifically for this, met him, worked out all the logistics and the monies were paid, all receipts were taken. But day before, Manoj ji, please, no. it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor you are here. Manoj Raghuvanshi ji is here. Without his reporting in 1990, we wouldn't have known anything about Kashmir genocide. So it's a great honor. Uh, one of those brave, courageous journalists, I am proud of you. Aye, sit here. Manoj ji, aye, sit here. So, day before was the World Free, uh, uh, World Press Freedom Day. On that day, I got a call from the president. In fact, they gave a call to Z and they put me on a, a conference call. And he said that this needs to be cancelled because some major media players, international media players, I want to underline the word international, and during this course, whenever I talk about media, I am focusing only on international media. I have nothing to say against uh, our own media. Uh, these people put their foot down and they said they will not allow anybody who talks about Kashmir genocide inside that campus. And they threatened to do an en masse resignation. He told me, since we are talking freely and honestly, I don't want to hide any fact and I'm not a very politically correct person, you know by now. He categorically mentioned three names, New York Times, Al Jazeera and Bloomberg. There are a couple of more names which emerged later on Yesterday, between the course of these two days, some members of Foreign Correspondent Club have also put it on social media in different posts, the names of the people, it's for anybody to see. And it is really unfortunate that this anti-free anti speech, anti-truth activity took place in a government-owned, a government-owned uh, swanky, Bungalow or whatever that place is, that club. And just for your information, this property is right in front of which is the highest temple of justice. And the film, the Kashmir Files, its theme is right to justice. And it was denied uh, the press conference which was initiated by the Foreign Correspondents Club. And also it happened on the World Press Freedom Day. Same day, they also published lots of reports how India's uh, press freedom index is going down. And it gives me reason to believe that is a propaganda. In fact, the freedom of press is curbed by the international press, at least in my case. The reason I'm here is to discuss two things with you that what this film has achieved for India, and I am only talking specifically about India. We are, I'm a film professional, you are a media professional, but before that, above that, we are Indians. And I have reasons to believe, and there is a very, very clear-cut, obvious design, that some agenda-driven media, international media houses, who are actually political activists, 
how they are trying to interfere in India's politics and dictate their terms and how they are threatening India's sovereignty. It is for everyone to see. I have told you a few names before this. This film, actually people who do not do research, for them this film released on 11th of March. But in reality, we started screening this film in November last year in US and it was open forum. It was not by, uh, it was not restricted. Anybody could see it. And we showed it in 16 different cities and every single city have offices of these five, six media, uh, global media players. We invited them, we begged them, we pleaded. We literally begged to come and see the film and report the genocide of Kashmiri Hindus. None of them came. But when the film, after its release in four or five weeks, it became a historical success. When the whole world started talking about it, when the blacks, whites, Jews, Hispanics, Asians, Yazdis, Pakistanis, Israelis, Indonesians, when all of them started writing good things about this film or making videos on YouTube and everywhere, they realized that it was denting their narrative. And that's when I thought they conspired. Because one after the another, I can name all of them. I have, I reply only on voice recordings these days just to safeguard myself. One after another, within seven, eight days, almost every major player who malign India's image internationally without checking out the truths started calling me. And the line of question was only Hindu-Muslim. Nobody, not even one bothered to ask me that all those victims who you have interviewed can be talked to anyone. Not even one tried to ask me the facts I have shown are right or wrong. There were no line of question which was related to the film. They had only two words and I have all of them as evidence. If the need be, I can make them public. Only two things they talk about. Muslims and Modi. And which gives me clear, clear reason to believe that they are agenda driven. And whatever reply you give them, they don't care. Ultimately, they just pick up one word or one line and they put it there and you are wrongly presented. And all these articles right from Time to BBC to Al Jazeera to CNN to The Economist have not spoken about the film. They have not reviewed the film. In fact, they have tried to say why this film is being made at all. The people who failed to report the genocide are upset with a film being made on the genocide. And they don't have the guts to ask the same questions to Mr. Mr. Spielberg who made Schindler's List. So I want to tell you that under this design, under this conspiracy, our press conference was cancelled. I was advised not to speak about it. I was told by a very, very senior journalist who I respect a lot, he said, if you do that, everybody will get united. And the same thing happened with uh, Press Club of India. After confirming everything, they also cancelled mm -hmm. last evening. So I just want to bring a couple of things to your notice. There are three, four major allegations against this film, which are coming from these major agenda-driven uh, foreign media players. Number one, they in all their articles, they write this is a piece of fiction and they write this is a piece of fiction because it is in our disclaimer. In fact, the time has falsely reported that the film begins with a disclaimer which says this is a piece of fiction. I want you to understand this design. The disclaimer is here in front of me, CBFC certified and we showed this CBFC certified disclaimer everywhere in the world where we have shown the film. The first line of it begins like this. This film is based on true incidents as recorded in video testimonials of the victims of Kashmir genocide. 
It goes on to say, to respect the dead and the victims' families, we have changed the name and timelines. It is a very ethical thing to do. All responsible filmmakers do that. If you see some of the greatest true stories, you hide the names. In the end, there is a technical line which Indian courts force you to put. CBFC forces you to put. It is not out of choice, which says that filmmaker does not take any responsibility for any kind of inaccuracy. And this is assumed from them that it's a fictional story. And since it's reported in time and all major, these five, six usual suspects, therefore some people, genocide deniers, people who want to cancel this genocide story have gone and also vandalized the Wikipedia page and they have rewritten this film is based, it's a fictional story. Muslim police officers dying in Kashmir is a true story. Not even one Kashmiri Pandit family living in Kashmir today is a fake story. This is the narrative they are trying to create. It's for you to judge why it is being done. With all due respect, something which all the governments, all the governments, I am underlining all the governments, all the civil societies, all human rights commissions, all empathy ambassadors, and especially these global media should have done, which is in any civilized society to record the testimonies of the victims. All the testimonies of Jew survivors were recorded. In every war, in any crime like this, the foreign media runs first and they record testimonies of the victims, which everybody failed to do collectively to resource less filmmakers did. Today, we are the only people in the entire world who have testimonies of the surviving victims of Kashmiri Hindu genocide. And we are very proud of this. And they are very ashamed of this. And that's why it reflects their failure and they want to destroy the credibility of this film. Second biggest allegation against us is that this film is funded by the government of India. Of, it's very hilarious, it's very childish, I shouldn't be answering it, but I want to. This film was in the making for last four years, not secretly, but openly. Every day's account, if you go to our social media posts of our I am Buddha and my own, it's all out. We have reported every single thing we did in the process of researching and making this film. In fact, the name of this film was crowdsourced. When we got this idea to make this film, I put out on social media that if you have any title gave, and this title actually has come from the people. Then we invited people in to participate in the research process. A lot of research was crowdsourced. GKPD facilitated this entire research all over the world. We travel all over the world. Everybody knew about this film. Nobody alleged that this is government funded or government supported. The film became a historical success in the first four days. By Tuesday, this was undisputable that this film is going to create a history. Till then, not even one person say it, said it's government supported. But on Wednesday, I think, I'm not right, Tuesday evening or Wednesday, the Prime Minister spoke about it in a different context. And suddenly, it became government funded film. Now I want to ask this question, was the genocide of 1990, was it also funded by the current government? Why was that not reported? Which means, in India, see it's very important to, for you to understand, before my film, at least seven to eight major, major films were made on Kashmir terrorism. And they, all big production houses, biggest of the stars, Fiza, Fana, I say it all the times, I'm repeating once more, Fiza, Fana, Fana uh, Mission Kashmir, huh? huh? Dilse, um, Heather, 
and and there are lots of seven eight films few i have cleared in cbfc they were stuck for a long time i have cleared them half widows and these kind of films uh, they were also cleared so i'm not talking about smaller films which which go to film festivals i'm talking major films all those films were set in the period of 90s the troubled period between 85 to early 90s none of them film not even one film mention anything about hindus forget hindu genocide as if hindus never lived in that land if you pick up if a foreigner picks up these eight films and watches them as a history lesson they will never ever come to know that even one hindu lived over there and all the films justified terrorists so i want to ask these great players like time and new york times when they praise these films were these films sponsored by terrorists would you say hader fiza and fana and mission kashmir they were funded by terrorist organizations because they were justifying terrorism and obviously it is written by people who have not seen the film and they are just they have an agenda and they have a narrative and they want to reinforce that narrative because the film is critical of the current government also आप में से फिल्म देखी है किसी ने डू यू रिमेंबर बिफोर द क्लाइमेक्स वन बिट्टा इज टॉकिंग वॉट डज इट से कैन यू से दैट इन अ फंडेड फिल्म एंड इट इज इट इज सो इम्बेरेसिंग एंड शेमफुल दैट अ फिल्म मेकर हैज टू कम एंड जस्टिफाई हिमसेल्फ बिकॉज दे आर वेरी पावरफुल पीपल एंड दे आर वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट एन एंटी इंडिया नेरेटिव देन देर इज एन इंटरनेशनल पोलिटिकल कैंपेन अगेंस्ट इट a very well known leftist far leftist i would say a far leftist website of india the day film was released since then every single day they wrote an article on this film they never did it before ever in the past about any film 